Hello YouTube and welcome to my first video on how to flash Libre Boot using the Raspberry Pi on X200. I decided to make this video as I couldn't really find anything that would really guide me through the flashing itself when I was doing it for the first time so I decided to make this video. So right now as you can see I have an SSH connection to my Raspberry Pi. You can either do that the way I do it or through the Raspberry Pi itself directly. I just find this method easier. So let's start off by creating a directory for our flashing. So let's just call it x200, you can call it whatever you want, and let's go into it. So now we will download uh, flashroom, w, github. By the way, all the commands will be in the description, so you don't have to just type them out like I do. So let's clone it now. Shouldn't take too long. Now, should create a directory called Flash Home. Let's go into it. Now we'll need to compile it. So type in make. As you can see, there's error immediately at the start. We just have to copy this. I need to retype it if you're doing this on Raspberry Pi. And then just paste it again. Modify this to 1. And now you can easily compile it without any problems. <coughs> so doing this on the Raspberry Pi 1, it might take a bit of time. I'm just gonna skip over the compilation part for you guys, so you don't have to go through all of it. All of it. So now the compilation is done, we can install it. Just go to make again, just modify it. sudo make install with the config enable lib usb thing. Go for it, should install it now. Great. Now cd dot dot flash run is installed. We can remove the directory. There we go. Now let's move uh, libreboot roms on the Raspberry Pi. If you're true SSH, the easiest way is just go to libreboot project website, downloads, any of those links. We want to go stable. You want to go pick the latest one, rom, rob in this case. And then we have three files for x200, 16 megabyte one, 4 megabyte and 8 megabyte. It depends on your chip, so once you tear down your laptop you will have to look up the chip name and see which one you have. In most cases it's either 16 megabyte or 8 megabytes. In my case I have the 16 megabyte one, so I'm just gonna copy the link address, go back to my SSH, e get Download this, should take a second, there we go, it's here now, let's extract it, now uh, tar f. should say it takes a few seconds to extract, comes with a lot of different roles for different keyboards, let's just wait for this. And it's done now, let's check, directory is here, let's go into it, and everything is here. Now would be time to start, you can either use soy clip to 
connect your Raspberry Pi to your chip, BIOS chip, or you can solder wires directly on it. In my case, I'll be soldering the wires. I'll be showing the board now. Here is the X200 motherboard. The BIOS chip is here. It's a 16 pin one. Before you even connect the solid clip or start soldering, you should remove the BIOS battery, which is gonna be located here. I already have it removed. Also, when connecting it up, make sure your Raspberry Pi is off. Once you have everything wired up, turn it on and you can start flashing. So now I'm just gonna solder the wires and then skip over this part. It's up to you if you're gonna use a solid clip to connect to the BIOS chip or solid wires like I do. If you don't use the 8 pin chip, which over like that, you can actually directly solder yourself if you're soldering to the 16 pin connectors, just like if you were connecting a 16 pin. It makes life easier if you do it this way, and it's the best chance you're gonna screw up. If, you, if you're a beginner, you don't want to solder, so you can this way, you can get it for 15 euro, you just wait to do it. Now I have it ready, solder on, you can see, I think the best soldering, anyway, this motherboard itself is used for parts, so there's no harm damaging anything, it's not working anyway, I usually use it just to solder biases on this and solder wires on them, so now we can put on the Raspberry Pi after this, either you have the solder in on, done on it, or solder clip attached, or you can start flashing it. So now when we have everything wired up, we're back to our Raspberry Pi. It's the first thing, sudo mod prop spy def. There we go. Now go to flash room p Linux spy def. Oops, def spy def spy speed. Here we're gonna send the speed of our flashing. In my case, I go with 128, that works the best for me. You might try higher or lower if it doesn't work for you. It tr truly depends, it doesn't matter. Once it works, it works. Now read, we're gonna be reading to ROM in case we want to come back to the original BIOS. So just call it ROM1, ROM. V. Let's go with that. So detected a chip, in most cases it will I say multiple flash definitions match detected. We need to pick one of those. It should be written on the chip itself. Look it up. I know it's this one for sure. So just mine is dot C. Go for it. Now it's working. As you can see, it's reading flash. You will want to repeat this step three times to make sure the copy of your bias is correct. I'm gonna skip over this step and move on once I finish copying tr it three times. Now when we have our three ROM reads done, you can see ROM 1, ROM 2 and ROM 3. You can do a check on them now. There we go. In a few seconds we should see the sum. <coughs> Here's the first one. Second one. Top. They should all match if they do the read well successful and we can back up. Rom read the bias just in case something gets wrong. Now, if we go to our folder with Libreboot, we're gonna see all these different biases. Basically, they're for different keyboard layouts. In my case, I'll be using the UK one, and you want to use it with the one ending with the VESA FB. So, let's go back. There we go. 
I actually had to use the 8 megabyte image because I actually have the 8 megabyte chip rather than the 16. I don't know why I thought I do have the 16, but I don't. So I'm gonna go with the 8. content, then write the other one, compare it, it should be done. I'm going to skip this process because it's going to take a very long time, probably around 20 to 20 minutes, so I'm using the lowest power speed. So Libreboot has been just flashed and as you can see verifying flash verified. In some cases my show is not verified, it might say it wasn't written, so that just if you're not sure if it was successful, write it again, write it again. Even if it says verify, I would suggest you should write it again, in case something went wrong. If it goes right again, it should be fine. Second time, it should be fine. Third time, it should be fine. So now let's see if it picks up and works. So as you can see, Liverpool looks fine on the X200, which flashed successfully, and everything is done. There is one thing left on this, it's the fact that the MAC address on the actual BIOS itself is not the one that your X200 comes with. The official MAC address of your laptop should be at the back of it. There should be a sticker on with the MAC address, if not you might just have to go back to the old BIOS if you already flashed it. Though. Not take a record of it. Doesn't matter, you can always recover it. So basically, in the next video, I'll be showing you how to change that MAC address, as well as how to internally flash the BIOS from your X100 laptop, so you can update the BIOS anytime you want, anywhere. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And if you want to see more, just remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out more videos soon enough. And I'll see you next time.